Hello and welcome back to the channel, hope you're doing well. Uh, a lot of you have been asking, where's the videos on all the cars? Where's the cheap cars, part exchange, that sort of thing? And yeah, you're right, I haven't been doing those. We've been doing auction videos, we've been doing visiting other car dealers and stuff like that. So, customers always right, give the viewer what they want. Uh, I'm going to start showing you a few more of the sort of cheap part exchanges coming in. Now, I can't necessarily always guarantee that I will do like a high peak style, uh, we get it in, it's filthy, we'll clean it up and I'll retail it having massively overspent. I have massively overspent on this. And not make any money because I, I do want to make money. I don't think I make as much money out of YouTube as Matt does, certainly. I definitely don't. So I need to make money from cars. So a lot of these we will buy in. We'll do, you know, the bare minimum to make them a sort of part exchange to clear or a trade sale, but at least, you know, reasonable, good working order. That's pretty much the case with the car today. We bought this in, part exchange. Uh, we'll take them in, you know, even if we don't really want them. We don't want to resell them, that's for sure. Sophie might sell them from the farm. Still get, a, you know, your Consumer Rights Act and the whatever, whatever. But um, we just don't want to be selling 500 pound cars from here, where we're also selling 15 grand cars. Just just doesn't really work very well. So um, we'll see what we can do with this one. In fact, I think the guys have already started, Macaulay started doing some work on this already. It's a minter. The reason we don't necessarily always get them on the channel was because they come in, we get straight in the workshop to be checked over. Uh, nine times out of ten, they'll just start doing the work and get it out immediately, but I've kind of caught this one in the middle, so let's have a look what we got. Right, before we get into the video, I just want to ask you a massive favour, and that is to subscribe to the Shifting Metal YouTube channel. I know everyone asks you this, and it's really annoying, but it really does help me out, and I'm wanting to put my money where my mouth is. I am putting up a Tag Heuer Formula One watch that's worth £2,000 on Pride and Pinion right now, and I'm going to give it away completely for free as soon as we hit 75,000 subscribers. So if you're already subscribed, thank you very much. You're in with a chance of winning the watch. If you haven't already, do it now. It's free to do and everybody wins. So we've got a red slash pink, it looks, down towards the bottom. 2010 Peugeot 207 SW. It's a diesel, uh, which I think makes it probably the 1.6 HDI, the manual. What can I say about it? Nothing too special. Um, you know, I don't think it's a special model or anything, but it seems honest enough. 129,000 miles. I can't remember exactly what we took this in part exchange against. Uh, Dan's over there. Dan, can you remember what you took this in part exchange against? Uh, 318D. The BMW 318D that you saw me buy at G3 Auctions. They decided, oh, I remember the chap wanted to come in. He wanted the car really quickly. We managed to turn it around in you know, a few days for him. And this was his part exchange. Probably means the MT is running out on it. I can't remember. Um, but we also know that he's a couple of little bits doing to it. But yeah, that's what we took it in part exchange against for 500 pounds. Um, I think that's all right. I think we can turn that around and still have some money in it, but it is going to need a little bit of work. So. We'll walk around it and we'll kind of point out everything. Here's things that you might want to do, like headlights are hazy and they could do with a buff um, or a proper restoration, but we're not going to do that. We might spray some silicone on there just to brighten that. We might run the polisher over it just to make it a bit better, but we're not going to do a full restoration on it. Wheels, obviously, they're going to come up a lot cleaner once we get some acid wheel cleaner and stuff on there, get theirs cleaned up, but they are curbed to high hell. We're not going to get involved with doing that. Tires seem legal, but until we get them on the ramp, we won't know. I suppose before he has it on the ramp, so if they were a problem, he would have let me know. Uh, we have got a nice panoramic roof and a Halford roof rack. Might suit someone if you're looking for in a cheaper state car. Considering it's red, the paintwork actually doesn't look too bad. I'd expected a lot more lack appeal. I haven't looked at it closely, but we might find some, but I think it's okay. This wheel will come up pretty well, actually. There are some scuffs, but not too bad. Again, on the tyre, that's a Rotower around the back, it all looks okay. No bodywork damage, really, other than when we get around to here, there's a scrape down the side. But again, on a car this cheap, this sort of miles, probably not going to matter too much. What have we got on here? Uh, safe Rich. This one's got a bit more curbing, passenger curbside, I guess. It looks all right down here. Strangely, what should really, theoretically, be the worst wheel looks the best. It looks pretty clean. Um, and probably the best tyre I've felt so far. Another safe rich as far as tread goes. So, actually, on the whole, it's not too bad on the outside, especially considering it's a red car. You expect loads of lack of peel. Um, it doesn't look too bad. So, 
We'll have a look inside. Just the one key, I think. Does the central locking work? Seems like it. Oh, I don't know actually. Don't know if the unlock one works. Oh, it does. If you reach in there, you see how cracked and horrible, worn out that thing is. But it does work. That's the main thing. Surprisingly, check strap seems okay. Oh, a bit squeaky. And on these, they quite often sound like, God knows, cracking nuts or something when it's opening. Um, it's quite dusty here. I can't tell if it's been smoked in or not. It doesn't smell smoky, to be fair, so that's a bonus. A bit grubby, but not too bad, really, as far as part exchanges goes. You know, quite clean in here. A bit of head grease on the headrest, but not too bad. It's got a metal. I wonder if that had a leather around it originally or not. We'll get into the gear shifter in a minute, but I wonder how we do the power opening blind thing. We'll try that in a minute. Back looks all right. I mean, it could do a wipeout and whatever, but again, if you're sending this tray to someone else, that's, that's their work to do, really. You know, I don't want to make it all fresh and clean and retail ready to then trade it on to someone who's getting a, you know, a cheap price, because we may as well do it ourselves. But, um, Okay, parcel shelf is here and it folds up in a weird way. Um, very grubby boot, a lot of sand. And, oh, feels like this. Oh, oh God, I get this wooden floor panel out. The way that's got that on there almost looks like that's the... Well, we've got a spare wheel in there. I can't really get this up properly. I can't really be bothered to drag it around and fight with it. Um, but again, not too bad. I just want to sort out, doesn't it? No, uh, Bash probably thinks he's going home now, because I've got the door open. What do you reckon, Bash? Mm, not that keen, are you? Like I say, it doesn't actually smell too bad in here, which is good. I'll fire it up and I'll tell you the mileage exactly. So, here's what it's come up with on the dash. Oh, it's gone away again now. I wonder if I turn it off and start it again. No, it's gone again. Oh, particle filter additive level too low. I can't remember what that stuff's called. I think they call it a uh, pack bag. I can't remember what they were calling it. But obviously there's a chemical thing you need to put in. I think they've put it in now, um, but I think they need to plug the computer in and tell it that that's happened. Um, otherwise it seems to run okay. I'm not gonna take this one out to drive just yet. I think we'll wait till they finish all the mechanical bits and pieces on it. Um, just to make life easier, make this video not as long as it needs to be, or could be. Um, so I think this is the blind switch down here, so, all right. It does actually work. Is there a massive crack in it? Is that why it's closed? No, I think I'll leave that open. That's quite a nice little added feature, really. Uh, so the mileage is 129,715. We'll do a vehicle score check on it because like I say, I don't know about the MOT. So the things we had to do were drop links because it was knocking on the front a little bit. Having Macaulay's now done drop links, he's done the additive bag thing, the exhaust, the hangers had all snapped off. So he's re-welded those back on. Um, just trying to get rid of the, like, the major obvious issues with this before you try and trade it on because if it's got a load of problems things that you can fix quite easily you may as well and what else i think that was it but th he thinks maybe we need to do a top mount so i've driven it around here and there's still a little bit of a knock um so there was some kind of debate between them whether it was just the drop links or whatever else so it will need to go back in for that and it needs to go in for gear selector cables i wonder if i can demonstrate that here about actually going out for a drive so i think they're having problems with first so if I put clutch down, it will, just won't go into first. I think they said second was stiff, but I've gone into second now. And for me to be able to drive this round from the other side of the building where the workshops are to here, I sort of put it in second. And so if you go into second first, you can get into first, but if you just try and go straight into first, you, that's third, I imagine. I don't know, actually. Oh no, that's first. So it did go in then, but it's certainly not ideal. 110 pounds, I think, for the selector cables. I don't know if it's really worth, I mean, it, 
yeah, it's the sort of thing I know it would annoy me. You come to a junction, you, you know, you're at the roundabout or whatever, and all of a sudden you go back into first, and it just won't do it. Even then, it didn't go in actually. Yeah, all right. So we're I mean, it will go in there. It just about has, but not the sort of thing you want to be doing, is it? Fighting with your gear selector just to get it into first gear. First gear is the one you normally want to rely on, on it to be quick. Um, so we'll do that. And then, yeah, that should be okay. I don't know what we've got in the way of service history. We have got a folder here. Imagine we've got a V5. Maybe the paperwork's all inside, actually. So I'll have to grab that. Let's have a look under the bonnet. Then you'll join me back out here in the car when I've got paperwork. And we might even have a spare key then, if that's the case. If the paperwork's not in here, then... Yeah. We'll find out in a sec. To be fair, it might be somewhat pointless looking under here and checking the oil condition and everything because, as I say, Macaulay has just done an oil change and filter on this, so it's like literally brand new oil. We can check generally the condition. Turbo doesn't look super oily or anything like that, so that's good news. Nice colour to the coolant. I won't open it in case it was hot, I can't remember. Um, yeah, otherwise seems okay. So let's go and see what paperwork we've got. And yeah, it's gonna affect the value quite a bit on this, I guess. So we'll find that and we'll chat. Right, grab the paperwork file that was inside. Should have been a bit better prepared. Uh, and conveniently, fold that over. Dan has filled out a little sheet for me. We do like a proper sheet for every car that comes in and it marks on all the body defects, all that sort of stuff. This being a trade one, it's just like a bit of a handwritten note. Uh, but it does say two keys, two owners. So the Camber and water pump done in November 2019, uh, around about 90,000 miles. So it was 40,000 miles ago, but still probably not due for a little while, is it? Um, we've got a service book. So let's just see out of curiosity how many stamps are in this book. Hopefully they've just put a stamp in it for an oil change, which they haven't. Um, what have we got? Six stamps, the last being... 53,000 miles, and then I guess it goes on to all these receipts in here, which I won't get into, but um, yeah, we have got a spare key as well, I should say, and we just serviced it, just so that people know that, you know, we know well, for our own benefit, we know that it's got some fresh oil in there. So here we are, lovely Peugeot, so come on here, and that is um, not a, a lot of scoring. On the desks, they're okay for a little longer. They're, I would advise anyone to replace them. Um, there's a knock. Anti roll bar links, they're knocking. Heavy oil leak from the engine. All over around there, you can see it all. That's all split. Then it's not leaking, it's, it's not holding the CV grease anymore. Again, steering rack, it's split. Someone's cable tied it up, tried, tried to make it last a bit longer, but again, it's split. This is also knocking. Again, so both both steering, the packed fluid, I believe it's called, uh, is split and it's leaking through its box. There is a uh, wheel bearing wear, minimal though, Min very very minimal, not not that bad. As you come to the back, come under here. That is um, broken. This one is nearly, very nearly broken. Yeah, and this side, this side's the only good side. This side's fine. This side's okay. Got another. Another good one. But other than that, it's a minter. It's a, the faults we found with it. Uh, it had a um, it has a low fluid fault and some other little bits on the actual diagnostic machine. But other than that, it's all right. Got new boots. It's good. It's a good car. So thanks to Dan's note, we do know that it's got MOT to the 23rd of August 24. But I am going to do a vehicle score check anyway as it always pays, it's, it will help my curiosity as to what it says on this vehicle, what it scores, because this is the free vehicle check that scores your vehicle from one to 999 based on its MOT, history, mileage and age, and many other factors to be fair. Ours is 475, pretty average. Let's have a look at the MOT history, that's what I'm more interested in. In fact, if we look at the MOT, uh, the vehicle details, so it is a 1.6 diesel, I was right. It's got 150 days MOT left in it, because it's whatever, so definitely we can sell it with the mileage that it's got on. Mileage tracker, all looks good, it's either going up consistently or staying the same hasn't dropped down but MOT vehicle history is what we want 
So when it passed on August 24th last year, offside front disc worn, but not excessively, near side front disc worn, but not excessively, and central exhaust mounting defective. Well, we've sorted that. Discs. Let's have a quick look. Jeez Louise. Yeah, they, I mean, there is a huge lip on that. Um, so, yeah, we might end up doing that as well. But we'll figure out values on this first, because, again, get carried away doing someone else's work if we're gonna trade it on. But if we are gonna sell it uh, as like a part X to clear, then for my peace of mind, I'd wanna do it. it. Goes to show that you doing your vehicle score check definitely pays if you were looking at a car and you might not have thought to check the brakes. It would have told you by looking at the MOT history. Um, there's absolutely loads of stuff on here as well. You can use the AA mechanic. So if you say, I've got a big lip on my discs, what should I do? It'd probably advise you that you need to change them. But if you're not mechanically minded, it's really handy to have that on there. And of course, if you were buying this privately and you were gonna hand over your hard-earned cash and you wanna do a vehicle history check, you can do that with vehicle score. You can do either their salvage report, which is £2.97, the ultimate report, which is £8.97, or the ultimate report plus £11.97. It's the same as the ultimate report, but also gives you £10,000 of Experian data guarantee. You can tell you whether it's been written off, whether it's been stolen in the past, whether it's got finance left against it, Loads of things that you're gonna to wanna to know about uh, before you hand over your money. It might have been a taxi for you know, it might have been an ex-police car and that might bother you. So you will find that out. If you do any of these reports, you can get 20% off using the code shifting metal 20. If you do the ultimate report plus, which is the one that I highly recommend doing, give you ultimate peace of mind, that's gonna make that just £9.58. And it's a bargain really when it comes to buying a car. I did actually look this up on my auto trader portal, which I'm gonna log into now. And I'm pretty sure it told me that the retail value of this was 1600 quid. So it doesn't leave us a lot of meat on the bone, to be honest. What I'm gonna do instead of that is actually look on the auto trader website itself, because it might give us a better idea to see what they're actually being listed for, because it's not always the most accurate, especially when it comes to lower value, older cars. So what have we got? A Peugeot 207SW. That's that there. I'm going to filter them down the quickest way we can, which will go by age. Then we'll go by mileage. At least 125. There's only two. And they are priced. One's priced at £1,000. The other one's priced at £1,550. Now, that makes it sound like our £1,600 retail price is probably right. But if these would load, which I probably won't do because I'm just that far away from the internet box now, uh, maybe they're really rough condition or maybe not. Maybe we'll get a grand for it. So if we've paid 500 quid for it. Uh, I think we spent 150 quid on parts so far. And what did I say? I want this some pads on the front now as well. Let's say it's, it's going to cost us 750. There's still 250 quid in it just to sort of trade it on whether it's worth it or not, you know, or whether it would have been worth it or not. Probably not, but it's better than, I mean, we make 250 quid profit. Is it worth the hassle or should we just have traded it on for what? Problem is, for me, we're trying to trade stuff on. Is I'll get the local lads who sell the cheaper stuff come round. And then, have you got an to part exchange? And they say, yeah, okay, I got this. I gave 500 quid for it. You have it for 600 quid. Oh, no, I want it for 400 quid. And that just irritates me, to be honest. Uh, when I was starting out like that, a, all the local dealers wouldn't give me their part exchanges because they wanted to sell them themselves. But if they had done, I would have taken them just to get your foot in the door and take them on, not start being fussy and be like, no, I think I should get it cheaper and I want more profit, etc. There's got to be enough profit in it. I get that. But if you can sell this car for 1,600 quid from your pitch where you sell this sort of stuff, buying it for a 1,000 pounds, or let's say buying it as it was for 600 quid, then you've got a 1,000 pounds to play with, haven't you? And it's only a few hundred quid to sort all this stuff sell it with the MOT it's got, and you'd have been doing pretty well for your investment. I would have said you probably doubled your money. So, yeah, I kind of wish there was a good outlet. I'm sure I'll get an influx now of people saying they will buy my part exchanges, but it needs to be for sensible money. Um, and I'd probably get in trouble with my other half because she likes selling them. So maybe she can get 1,200 quid for it if we get it cleaned up to a reasonable standard and sort out the mechanical bits. So I guess we'll join up again once I've sorted the brakes. I think the McCauley's going to have to have it back in to figure out what it is, the other knock, the top link. And he also needs to do these gear selector cables so our gear stick works. And then I'll show you when it's all cleaned up. Maybe we'll put it in the nice showroom and it'll look shiny and see what a difference it makes. And 
see what we think we're going to do with it. So I will see you then. Right, so it's a couple of days later. The, I was about to call it a Porsche, but it's not a Porsche. The Peugeot 207 SW is looking much nicer. Toby's got some lovely shots to the outside. I mean, we've just given it a basic clean, to be honest, and a quick hoover out inside, nothing drastic. It does help making it look 10 times better. Macaulay's done some mechanical stuff. He's done steering uh, rack boots, gaiters. Uh, turns out they were in the car, as was the pat fluid that we had to put in. The guy had already, I think he'd already put one in or he already had bought one, but he couldn't program out the emissions thing on the dashboard because he didn't have the computer, but we could do that. So we've sorted that issue. He's done anti-roll bar links as well on this. I did write out a little piece of paper, but I'll probably have to do it and give it out to the garage because I've, I've left it. Um, but everything is now mechanically sorted. One thing we didn't do was the gearbox uh, linkage cables because what happens is Toby thinks it's very bad but amongst the rest of us we decided it wasn't that bad typical mechanics they're like no no, no it's fine it all worked perfect and then Dan will say oh yeah it's fixed itself must have fixed itself because you just take their word on it yes if you want to put this into first gear as we kind of probably went through it won't really um, but Toby kind of made a bit of a revelation really he said was it if you push it all the way across, like as you most do with most cars, you want to put it in first, you put it all the way across and then just push it into that corner. It won't do that, but if you just hover off a little bit, well, I won't do it now, probably because we're <laughs> probably because we're rolling along at 20 miles an hour. But yeah, if you're not, as long as you're not pushed right up against the edge, it will go in. And then my kind of way of doing it is if you put it into second, you can put it into first. We could have spent that extra 110 pounds and made it perfect, but when this is going to be sold as like a part X to clear with the MOT it's got, all that sort of stuff. It's probably not worthwhile. It's not too bad, is it? Yeah, it's fine. It's fine. Um, I mean, yeah, I mean, that's that's first now, see? First, no problem. And actually, I think the gearbox is quite nice. It's quite sort of like notchy. It's basically like having a gated R8, isn't it? Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's it. Um, looks a lot better there's not much more to say about this really um, it's now kind of fit for a trade the front discs as well they have got quite a lip on them McCoy looked at them but I guess they've got decent pads and whatever it's good to go for a little while I would have thought we'd have changed them but make people aware we can always change them it's probably only 50 quid for a set of discs and pads on this thing um, but we haven't done them currently they're not actually squeaking they're not warped or anything so Car actually drives quite well. Um, yeah, I guess we'll leave it there. We'll catch up. I don't, probably don't need to catch up. I can tell you pretty much. I made a mistake with the price. It was actually £500, not £400 we got this for. I can't remember what it said, um, but it was £500. Then we've spent, let's say, 40 quid on drop links or anti roll bar links. What else have we done? I can't remember now. So this is why I do need the list. I spent 30 quid on something. Um, let's say 40 quid for the anti-roll bar, the anti-roll bar links. 30 quid, what else? Help me out here. CV boots? See, well, not CV boots, it was the steering rack boots, but they were already in the car, as was the pat fluid, so that didn't cost us anything. Um, there was something else. We can't remember. I'm pretty sure it was CV boots as well. Was it? That's the like drive shaft boot. Yeah, oh, I had one of those as well, did it? That's all split. It's not holding uh, CV grease anymore. Yeah, oh, okay, so we probably bought one of those. I can't remember. But basically I decided that it all came to about 645 quid. If it was a CV boot as well, maybe it was more like 660 or something, let's say. And including the labor, I put about 75 quid's worth of labor in that because obviously we validated it. Um, Macaulay welded up all the exhaust, hangers and all that sort of stuff as well. Um, I'm sure there's something else, but I can't remember. I'll, I'll, we'll be put on the screen here. So let's say it's 660. I reckon, you know, 
We can probably double that. Yeah, I reckon we can get 1,300 quid for this. It's got pretty long MOT. Um, it's all mechanically sorted now. Drives lovely. Two keys, service history. Ah, the other thing, 30 quid. Oil and oil filter. It's just a rough guess for what it was. It might have been less, might have been a little bit more, whatever we pay for it. Uh, because we just did an oil and filter service on it as well, so I stamped up the book for that. Um, she's good to go, mate. You're a beauty, someone will be over the moon with this. For a red car as well, the paint's actually in pretty decent condition. Um, economical. What more do you want? So that's it. Um, Toby's with me today just because we're going to go and pick up another car from the car wash now. Why I've gone back to a, that car wash, I don't know, <laughs> but we're a, bit, we're a bit understaffed at the minute, so, you know, beggars can't be choosers. We're about to find out. Uh, what video will we see this in? I'm going to put this on TikTok, actually. Uh, I don't know if this will end up in the weeklies, but I've put it in on a TikTok. If you don't follow me on TikTok, it's shifting.metal. Uh, and I just... I think I'm just doing a little video saying, like, I got mugged off last time I was here with whatever car it was. I can't remember. The Micra. Are they going to do a better job on this? Don't know. You have to follow me on TikTok to find out. Follow me on Instagram as well. Don't forget, if you want to sell your car, go to carsboughtformore.com if you want to buy any merch or check out any of our private places that we've got for sale at the moment, then it's shiftingmetal.co.uk. I think that's it. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time. Say bye, Toby. Bye. Toby.